Hey everyone, I'm Lindsay Smith, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Outlook Podcast. Today we have Henry Cejudo, Triple C, Olympic gold medalist, and UFC flyweight and bantamweight champion. Wow, there's not too many people that get it right. I like that. Thank so, you. So I've been far, practicing. So so <laughs> it's far, so it's quite the title. It's very lengthy. It's it very is. impressive. It is blessed, man. Blessed. I've been, uh, you know, I've been pretty much sacrificed my whole life. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And now I'm here. Now I'm here with you, fine people. Yeah. So you are a longtime Suns fan, a uh, friend of the family. So what we're going to do today is we're going to play a game of Jenga. And on each piece of this Jenga game, there is a question written. And we will answer those questions. Do you okay. want to go first or do you want me to go first? The ladies first. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Also, I'm okay if you, like, I don't know what Jenga rules are. And but what happens if you, if this falls? No more questions? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so far, it hasn't fallen. <laughs> I'm pretty good at Jenga, so it depends uh, okay. on how good you are. <laughs> okay, so first question is about fashion. Tell me about how you put together an outfit. Oh my God, I think, uh, man, a lot of it now, I'm, a lot of stuff is actually given to me. Okay. And I really, I, I don't know if I have a little fashion sense. I just look, look at me. I look like a freaking, I look like I'm going to a funeral. <laughs> Well, but, then I'm in the same boat because I'm an all black you. <laughs> but I actually, I recently started to, uh, to use a lot of, I, to use a lot of like Lululemon. Okay. So the, the clothes that I used to have, I think I'm turning all that stuff in and just going pretty much Lululemon. So, so like casual, yeah, I'm just leisure. Going more, yeah, I'm just going more, you know, comfy, but I do have a lot of like nice clothes too. But I think for the most part, I do like that casual, that, you know, that nice feel mm -hmm. to your body. But hey, you got us all beat when it comes to accessories. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, pr they're right. pretty flashy. It, it goes, it goes so. with, uh, <laughs> it goes with the onesie from Lululemon, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, your turn. All righty, here we go. Can I punch these? Yes, I'm okay if you touch them. See, the point is to win this game, so I got, I got, I got to make this it. This is I gotta like make the competition hard. side of this. I got to make it hard for you, Lindsay. Oh gosh if this falls on your first try we're in trouble we'll have to restart this whole podcast <laughs> <laughs> take two but you see triple c's a risk taker so i could get with that that's it impressive <clears throat> all right favorite comfort food is that for you or for no me? for you you're the guest. You got to answer all the questions. All right. But I can tell you some of mine. A favorite comfort food, man. I think that it's just mom's cooking. Okay. What's you know? what does mom make? Like, what's her most famous? Well, dish? well, my mom's from Mexico City, so a lot of stuff that she does make it's like uh, it's it's sopas. It's like a fried dough with beans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, with a shredded beef. To tomatoes, you know, you add out, you know, you add all your condiments, sour cream, cheese. It ends up looking like a big pyramid by the time you're done. It's like a it's pizza. It's delicious. Yeah, but it's 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 off the wall. But here, actually, besides my mom's cooking, I'd probably say Peter Piper. Really? Yeah, I'm a Peter. Oh, okay. I'm, a, I'm a Peter Piper kid. I, I was, you know, I I grew up on 43rd and 47th, so. Is it the allure of the pizza or the nostalgia of the like games and atmosphere? <clears throat> no, we, we never played games. We used to find a way to hustle to play games. <laughs> hey, you gotta I know do my you gotta tricks. Do. I know my tricks. And you're from the hood, you got the tricks. But no, it's it's the actual taste of the pizza. Okay. And to us as when we were kids, it was always uh, you know, it was always a treat for us to, to mm -hmm. shoot out to because we would rarely shoot out to Peter Piper, even though we lived right next to it. But when we did it was it was a treat, so Besides my mom, besides my mom's cooking, I have to say Peter Piper. Okay. Oh, that one's too, too risky. Said, Don't mess at up the this moment. game. <laughs> I guess I should just go with the simple one, but I feel like it's just gonna make this. Oh, gosh, we're already putting us in a really bad spot. Okay, so you were the second UFC fighter to win two titles mm -hmm. in two different weight classes within the within a 12 month period the first, in one calendar year. So, what was that accomplishment <clears throat> like for you and going through that, what was like your mindset through that whole year? Well, honestly, it wasn't even so much winning that 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 second bout. It's what kind of came along with because there's been four people that have won 
uh, you know, that have been dual champions in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Conor McGregor, uh, Daniel Cormier, Amanda Nunes, and then now me. Yeah. But it was more the fact that I could separate myself. And how did I separate myself? This right here. And they're all former, the majority, 80% of the wrestlers are all former, 80% of the fighters in the UFC are all former wrestlers. Okay. So I've been able to accomplish something that will probably never be accomplished. Like, I could even capture a third belt. And I don't think it would, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't, this right here, it just, it just capitalizes on, on everything. Why so, does this mean so much? Because this is so pure. Okay. This is so pure. It's just the sport that I did it in and, and, and the year and the fact that I became the youngest in history. Yeah. I mean, we see the pictures. You yeah. John so Jones. <laughs> right, right. John Jones, Cormier, they're all former wrestlers that came from this background and they made Olympic teams, but they just never had a chance to win gold. Mm hmm and that's the separation for me. So I'm like in my own class a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? so, it, so it's cool to win two belts, but it's, it's cool the fact that I did it amongst this. So it puts me in a completely different category. With all due respect, but they could all better than either <laughs> I'm with it. So all right. that's that. And Your I'm turn. humble, by the way. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so you're really going with a strategy here. All I do is win. Tell us a story from your childhood. Wow. So you grew up in Maryvale, right down the street. I grew up in Maryvale. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys, uh, I'm going to share a, a childhood story with you guys. And it just came up to mind since you guys just did this. But I remember I was a little kid and we lived on 38th, um, uh, is it 30, yeah, 35th? 35th Avenue in Osborne, and remember, I was a seven. I was seven years old, and we lived in a little, the most ghetto apartment you could ever think of. Like just roaches, just crawling everywhere, up and down. But I remember one time, I was watching TV as a little kid, and I was eating cereal, and I saw this commercial of this race, this racetrack, like these these two cars, kind of, you know, the you know the infomercials and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm just like. I'm like, oh my God, dude, like it just come up. I'm seven years old and I says, I don't know how, but somehow, some way, I'm going to find a way to get this racetrack. Again, I live in the ghetto. I come from, I have no money <laughs> and there's no way I was going to ask my mom for that. You know, I'm one of seven kids raised by a single mother. So there's just toys. I never grew up with them. But as a little kid, I've always had ambition and... There is a friend of mine who was an immigrant who, who lived right down. He, he was probably about seven or eight, too. And I says, hey, man, did you see that commercial that's come out, that, that came out on TV at the cartoons? Like, yeah, man, that racetrack. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we're going to find a way to get that racetrack. Man. And I said, we're going to just follow my lead. So this is terrible. I don't even know if I should share this, honestly. <laughs> so I'm seven, eight years old. I'm probably about eight years old. And I remember, you know... I, you know, I was always a kid that had shorts. I was always pretty much naked. Okay. And I was a kid in the apartments, so always walking and, you know, doing So kind of not crazy much thing. has changed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, this, this. But besides this, <laughs> I said, this is what we're going to do. And me and him, I said, we're going to go over. We're going to put mud all over our face and our body. We're going to go to the Circle K across the street and we're going to beg for money. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Within a day, by the time we were done, I think we had collected about fifty dollars. Okay. And did you get your <clears> racetrack? The next, yeah, the next, the, the the next day, I went. We went to the store. We freaking bought the racetrack. And when I got the racetrack, we played for it for like maybe a couple hours. And I told the kid, I says, "Here, man, you can have it." Aww. I said, "If my mom sees me with this racetrack, dude, I'm screwed, dude." <laughs> So you can keep it. You got me there for a minute. <laughs> but it was it was the fact that I was driven. Like I already knew that if I wanted something, you gotta find despite, a way to get it. Yeah, I I went to the extremes to get it. So it's kind of like what I do here. Like I will go to the I will put my body to the extremes. Like mm -hmm. I won't do anything uh, illegal, but I put my body I put my body to the extreme in order for me to accomplish what I've accomplished. Nice. So as a little kid, I can tell you guys that I I. I was destined to, to be somebody at a very young age, and I knew it. I knew that I, I knew that I was special. I really like that story. I know it's you were saying you're not sure if you should tell it, but I actually really <laughs> like it. I feel like it tells us a lot about your character and what it, where you came from, and what it took to accomplish everything you've accomplished. Yeah. All right, so, you ready? So what do I st stack it up top? Yeah, but this is also strategic too because if you stack <sighs> it up top and it falls, you technically it's lose. It's not gonna fall. Just but... so you know. Oh my goodness. 
Okay. When no, did you this become... This is making this hard, man. She, she, <laughs> you, really, you really want this to end. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> when did you become a Suns fan? I became a Suns fan. I, I've always been, you know, I, I wasn't born in Phoenix. Uh, I was born in L.A. And then I moved to New Mexico and I started school there. And then by the time I was, I think, six or seven, I came out here. And mm -hmm. I went straight to the west side. And ever since then, I think this was back in, uh, this is back when the Suns Glory days were around like maybe around 93, I believe we mm -hmm. came. So about the time that they, uh, they, they went up against the Bulls for the championships, unfortunately we lost. But <clears throat> ever since, ever since I, I just became a, a very diehard just Arizona fan. I, I love the Cardinals. I love the Phoenix Suns, the Coyotes, whenever I get a chance to go to a game. But... If, if I was to pick one team sport that I really love, it's, it, would, it would be basketball. Okay. That I could stay in and, and watch the fast pace and see these giants, you know, play. So to me, I guess I've always been a fan since, since I've moved here. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I went to my first game when I was maybe about 12 years old. I think I remember waiting in line. I think they were giving like a raffle. I forget what it was for like a dollar to go in and watch the Suns play. We, we waited outside for like two hours and... And uh, it was fun. Do you remember that game, like how you felt the first time you were with, like had that atmosphere around you? Because it's so different the first time you come to a game and you experience live basketball versus watching it on TV. Oh yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful, especially now that I get a chance to sit front row. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I remember the first time I went, I remember uh, uh, who, who, uh, uh, who is it? Miller from the Indiana Pacers. Reggie Miller, yeah, okay. so he was playing. So I already knew who Reggie Miller was. So when I saw him playing up against the Suns, to me it was, it was cool because I saw the guy that, you know, that, that I grew up watching. I was able to watch him uh, compete against the Suns, and the Suns actually won that game. So, you know, the Suns have always been special to me. Very cool. Okay. Good luck. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you know you can pull from this side too. <laughs> yeah, I'm too lazy. I'm just making like a leaning tower over here. I said I'm too sore. I've been working out like crazy. If you were stranded on a desert island, what two things would you want would you want with you? Wow. You guys are making this hard, man. Is this uh is Making she, you think here. Are you guys going to kidnap me here? What's, uh, <laughs> no. Is that, is, that, is that what's going on here, guys? <laughs> you represent Phoenix too well. It would, it would be a disservice to us to kidnap you. Yeah, I mean, I would, the initial thing that, would, that comes to mind, I would say the Bible. Okay. But I don't know if I would actually take this. I already know the word. You know what I'm saying? Like, as much as I, <laughs> I got to survive, right? I don't want to die See, that's either. the thing. Like, do you take something that is kind of frivolous that will keep you entertained? Or are you going more survival route? No, you have to go survival. So I would say a knife and, uh, and a pot. Okay. That's a pretty solid choice. Yeah, a knife to kill the animal and a pot to... Uh, to make some food. To, what, to make some food. And boil some to water. Boil water. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we can survive. We can survive with that. So maybe even forget the knife. Maybe even some fire <laughs> and the pot, and just uh, just find a way to stick an animal. I mean, while I guess sleeping. <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a tough one. What about you? What you got? What would you take? Um, that's a really hard one too. I definitely something to cook with, like a pot, because uh -huh. you would need that both for food and water. And Instagram. No, I'm not that <laughs> bougie. Come on. <laughs> There's no service on this island, and how am I paying for the cell phone bill? Come on. Um, no, I would think like maybe even uh, like extra clothes because, you know, if it gets cold or you don't want to be wet all the time, you know, and then you could use it to like make ropes and tie stuff and things like okay. you did have to maneuver some like thing to kill animals with or fish with or something. Right. Having a piece of clothing to like tie some stuff together might be, come in useful. Okay. I don't know. I guess and then we'll what have else? To see. A pot. Okay. Yeah, definitely that. Okay, still in my answers. All right. Okay. I mean, <laughs> low key, if we're being serious, I would take a boat. Like, if I was allowed to really pick anything, I'd take a boat. Like, get me off of this island. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a great answer. That's a great like, answer. Like, if we're being honest, that's what I would really want. 
but you know, I'm trying to play the game here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is a fun one. What is your all time son's favorite starting five? So it can be a mix of different players from across different eras. Yeah. And I, you know what I would say? Obviously, you got to put Charles Barkley up there. Yep, that's a solid so one. So Charles Barkley, I remember AC uh, Green, mm -hmm. uh, Steve Nash. Always a positive one yeah, to put in there. To, He's going to help you win. Yeah, you have to put. For you sure. have to put. He was, man, he was an all-star, too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did I say AC Green? Mm -hmm. I did. A, I yeah. did say AC. So you Green. probably need a big guy. So you could do like probably Amari, DeAndre yeah. Amari. Uh, uh, Amari Stoudemire, and then probably now it's probably Booker. Okay, that's so. a solid starting five. <laughs> oh damn, my turn, huh? Mm-hmm. Damn this. Do you know what this game is getting complicated? It I'm gonna is. have to. Use the French. <laughs> um, I just want you know bragging rights are on the line. Oh, man. Like if you lose this game, I'm gonna change my Twitter bio. To the triple C Slayer? Yep, exactly. Alright. Who is your idol? Man. <whistles> That's a good one. I think uh I mean I I, I can give you a two part question on that. Okay. I would have to say every parent, every good parent, every good father, every good mother that, uh, you know, that's there for their kids, any family man. Like to me, that's what I admire probably more than, more than anything. People that are surprising to a lot of people, but to me, because that's something that I desire to be someday. So I just say a family man. And then, uh, if you're talking about like a celebrity that, uh, that I look up to, that I've always looked up to, I'd have to say Kobe Bryant. Okay. Rest in peace. Um, you know, even prior to his death, like I've always loved that dude. And ever since his death and since his passing, I've been able to watch him. And I've been, literally, you can ask my girlfriend, and I've been like an hour every day, I would just study what the stuff that he has to say. I watched his whole funeral a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the dude was, the dude got it. He reminds me a lot, a lot like me. Like he was a guy that was necessarily not the most wanted, but he succeeded at what he got. And then he completely just went 180 and started to become a philanthropist. And I think to me, it's like, you know, rest in peace. But Kobe Bryant is, uh, is somebody that I truly, truly, uh, truly admire. Well, it's cool, too, because the first answer of being a family man, Kobe was exactly that, especially after <clears throat> his career in basketball ended. He put so much emphasis in raising his daughters yeah. and being that father and husband that you were just talking about so yeah, exactly. seems like he's had an impact on you in more ways than than one he has sure. he has it we won it we won our olympic gold medals together too and i have a i have a picture i haven't found it but uh we both won it together we took a picture both we were both on oprah uh together um i seen him on on like maybe four other four other occasions too we ran into mm -hmm. he's a big he was the owner of the ufc so he knew, he's seen my fights before, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty to unique say. to be able to say. And he was a big fan. He, he had part ownership, so, you know. But, you know, this is life, man. Life comes and life comes and goes, and anybody could be next. That's why you got to hug your people. Mm -hmm. No one deserves to be bullied. Both kids and parents want schools and neighborhoods to be happy, safe places, and we can work together to help stop bullying. Standing up to bullying is easier than you think. Find out how at muststopbullying.org. Okay, so you have a fight coming up on May 9th against <clears throat> Jose Aldo. I call him Jose Baldo. Baldo, okay. Yeah. He's, um, he's losing every hair. I'm sorry to all the baldies out there, but I got to. I, gotta, <laughs> I just got to continue. You see that Jose Baldo or Jose Waldo? I Waldo, like where you at? So I'm just, I'm just gonna, I don't know yeah, which one is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us. Um, obviously I know what you're going to say to this one, but how is that fight going to go and how are you preparing for oh, it? Oh, he's going to bend the knee. Right. But how are you preparing <laughs> for this fight? What's your workout regimen like? Um, <clears throat> no, he's a legend. And I'll say this now, like obviously there's humor to me and whatnot, but 
he can knock me out at any minute. The dude's been, he's the greatest featherweight of all time. I mean, he's, he's beat everybody. But uh, my preparation for this fight, it's, you know, because this could possibly be my last fight. Really? Yeah, I've enjoyed my career. I love what I've, I love what I've accomplished. Uh, I've, been, I've been at it since I was 11 years old. I'm 33 now, believe it or not. <laughs> but the preparation here, it's, it's, it's like, or, or for my preparation, always, it's always like a do or die. Like, I, I'm in there, like, I want to make sure that I give it my all. And if somebody happens to beat me, then he deserves that belt. Mm -hmm. He deserves a praise, man. I'll grab his hand and I'll lift it. But for him to do that, he better come out firing. He better come out holding five aces. So I look to be victorious May 9th. Okay, so, so Jose Baldo, if you're watching this, start bending the knee right now. <laughs> okay, along those same lines, before I let you go next, I got to ask you about the surgery and the injury. So how are you feeling health-wise? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I, I blew my shoulder out in June uh, during my fight against Marlon Marias to win my second belt, to mm -hmm. win my second baby. And uh, I'm doing good now. I mean, this is... It's pretty crazy. But oh, you this got is, a gnarly scar. Yeah. You figured it's 2020, right? It has Maybe something make better, it a little smaller. Yeah, they, I ain't going to Mexico, guys. <laughs> like, hey, this is at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> but I was able to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself in that fight because I went in with a sprained ankle and then I blew my shoulder out in the first round, the last 37 seconds of the first round. And I still went in and I fought that dude with one, with one arm, dude. And I, I was able to beat him in that. Just goes back to the two. Okay, everything that I think up here, not in my head, but everything that I think up here, it's like I'm manifesting it. Like I'm right. Like I get it. Okay. So I'm able to transmit a lot of my, like the mentality that I have, the philosophies that I have, and I'm able to kind of do it physically. So it was, uh, it was, it was nice. It, it sucked. It sucked that I couldn't, I stayed in the hotel for, I think for like, uh, for like two days. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. Like I was in a wheelchair because I went in with a sprained ankle too. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yeah. In the fight. So. Came out a little, a little beaten. A little beat up. But, but so did he. But a winner. You know, I guarantee. Yeah. A he he beat got up, his but a winner. too. He got his too. I did <laughs> some knees to that noggin. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> All right. You're up. Yeah. <laughs> he probably has some nightmares of triple C. Oh, gosh. He had some nightmares for sure. God, right. he hit like a freaking, he hit like a donkey. Really? Oh, my God. Because he, he was shutting everybody's lights out. His last three opponents, he knocked out in the first round in the first minute. And these are little guys. You know, they were not, you know, I'm not, I'm not the size of Booker or Shaq. <laughs> you know, so it's hard. Yeah. But anyways, next question. What's your favorite workout? Oh, man, my favorite workout. Hmm. I think besides fighting, I'd, I'd, probably say, uh, I'd probably say stretching. Okay. I stretch every day. I have somebody that's, that lives here full time. And every night before I go to sleep, I get stretched out for an hour and 15 minutes. That's a long time. So, it is. It is. But I'm able, to, I'm able to do certain things. I'm able to have mobility. And my career has, ever, has, has been able to prolong because of that. So, besides fighting, besides wrestling, I'd have to say stretching. Okay. Can you do the splits? I know it's really random, but I'm just curious I if could. you stretch that much. Can you do the splits? I could. That's pretty yeah, impressive. I could. I've been wow. able to catch people even like in fighting because they're like, oh, he's a little dude. You know, his little, his, his little legs can't get up. But when, once they <laughs> see that leg fly, I was like, oh my, it's not stopping him. <laughs> and TJ can be a testament of that. But, uh, it's, you know, I, I thank God for the, for the fact that I've been able to use the flexibility for mm -hmm. Dara Torres, who's actually an Arizona native too. No, 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 not Dara. Yeah. Is it Dara? No, Dara. I'm not sure if she's a native, but she talked about how important she went to like five Olympics and she was 40 and she had talked about her flexibility and every since I heard her talk about it, I'm just like, man, I became adamant too. Yeah. Well, I think it also helps you like stay away from injuries. Right. When you're able to actually have that mobility. Uh oh. Are you sure it's you want to put it there? It's starting to shake. Okay. It's okay. Starting to shake Here we go. Back. I got a feeling this is where it ends. I don't want to. I don't want to lose. I don't like <laughs> losing just like the next guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want to lose. <laughs> I'm just as much of a competitor. Okay, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? 
If I had the world for 30 seconds, you might want to wave. Okay. You're... <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, man, that's a, that's a good question, God. You're making me think here. I know. Some that, of these are deep. Yeah. That life is all about relationships. Whether the religion, whether whichever religion, and, and I'm Christian, but I can tell you, like, I have friends from all across the world, Muslims, Jews, like, really good friends. Like, I go to the Middle East and, like, really good friends. I go to Russia. I go to, I go to a bunch of these different countries, and I have friends from all walks of life. And I, if I can say one thing to the world, is it's all about having a relationship with people, a, a loving relationship, because that's what all these religions and all their books would sum it's just having a loving relationship with the people amongst you. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a good one. I'm glad I pulled this one out and we didn't lose. The end. For you. <laughs> right now. Yeah, this is... I'm like prepared for this to tumble right now. I hope you guys got insurance, man, because these blocks look like they're going <laughs> to... They're pretty light. These blocks look like they'll... Oh my God, they're still, I'm still a ways. You got a ways. Okay, here we go. Hold on. <laughs> this is getting serious. I love this. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Mamba mentality. Let's see if you got a skill set here, though. Jeez, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay. Go to coffee order. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Like, what? What's your coffee? You know what? How do you I, take it? Uh, I actually don't drink coffee. No. no okay. No. I actually need things that need. I I need things to calm me down. Okay. Coffee is coffee's like. Ah, I could see that. I fear it. You know, so I, I don't drink. You got coffee. a lot of natural energy. Yeah, I do. I'm a I, I need, of I need that. something that freaking is like, dude, put me to sleep because I'm. Oh. I'm getting too crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm... <laughs> oh, you don't want it to fall on you? You think it's gonna fall these here? Are, these are prized possessions. You think here. it's gonna fall right now? <laughs> really? <laughs> get Uncle Dana White on you. All right, what's in your fridge right now? This is a good one. What are what's you in eating? my fridge? How do you prepare? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of uh, meal preps. So I have a chef that they deliver. They deliver food to me like every three days. It's all okay. organic, non-GMO, by the name of Franz Kitchen. So I've heard of that. she's uh, she's amazing, man. She, uh, it's, it's, it's I feel like I don't even feel like I'm gonna diet. So that's what I eat, but uh, you know I shop at Costco, so I have a lot of other stuff in there too. Do you have like a, a guilty pleasure? One of those like snacks you sneak every once in a while? Yeah, I would have to say uh, like uh, Mexican snow cones. Okay, yeah, that's you know a solid they, You one. know where they put like mangoes and chili mm -hmm. and lime and all that crazy stuff. So that's my that's my guilty pleasure. Okay. No one deserves to be bullied. Both kids and parents want schools and neighborhoods to be happy, safe places, and we can work together to help stop bullying. Standing up to bullying is easier than you think. Find out how at muststopbullying.org. I will say this was a really good game because it didn't come down. It's not looking like it's going to come down to um, where you're kind of stuck. No. Uh, you gotta let us. You gotta <laughs> let it settle in. The strategy here. I'm with it. So close. Jeez. <sighs> Suits or streetwear? Okay, we kind of talked about this one. Um, man, but this, I'm going to give you guys a different answer though, because I do like suits. Okay. I have like, uh, I used to collect suits from like all across the world, Dubai, mm -hmm. Iran, uh, from different places. So I got into it for a while, but if, if I was to have somebody to always dry clean and whatnot, I can see myself wearing suits every day. It is a hassle to have to take care of that yeah, all so the time. Yeah, so if, if it was that easy, I'd prefer suits, man. I like, I like feeling successful. <laughs> 
I'm gonna lose here. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lose here. Hello. <laughs> okay, if you could play a character in any movie, which character would you want to be? Um. <laughs> you put it up like that, that block. If I could be any character, like actor or character? Either one. I'm good with either one. Do <laughs> If I could be any character, like, okay, so any character. Hmm. I'm going to have to go with an actor, probably Ga Gael Gar Garcia. Okay. Yeah. What's he most well known for? Oh my God, he's. Or done what? A... What movie or show did you like? Well, fall in love with God, his character, I... him with. Oh, like me playing the part, being an actor, or. Yeah, or just like what? What is it about him that you like? No, well then if that's the case, maybe more. Uh, we'll skip that one. I, okay. I would. I would have to say maybe. Uh, maybe Denzel. Okay, that's a solid choice. Yeah, I think Denzel is. I think he's one of the either him or Mel Gibson, but. You know, Denzel, he can play a bunch of different roles, mm -hmm. and he does it very, very He's well. He's had a lot of fun roles, yeah, and so, everyone loves him. Yeah, so even like the even like the cringe of, the king of cringe character, like it's, I don't know if you guys have seen some of my Instagram stuff. <laughs> yes, we have. I take a lot of inspiration from Denzel, so. <laughs> can you cook? Um, yeah, I could cook. Okay. What's, your, cook. what's your meal? Uh, probably eggs. <laughs> So. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah, you I can make I one mean, mean grilled cheese. <laughs> all right. So I'd have to say, uh, I'd have to say eggs. <laughs> Boiled eggs, that is. You guys let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> Boiled eggs. Okay. Well, I will say if I do lose right here, it was a really good game. All I do is win. <laughs> Until you don't. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even, <laughs> if I'm you not could have, this. <laughs> if you could only have one app on your phone, what app would you choose? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Are we surprised? Not at all. No, I'll be honest with you. I think, <laughs> it, I think it'd be the Suns app. Okay. Oh, yeah, so. I love that. So there you go. There the you homie. have it. <laughs> Damn. I can't, sh I can't scoot some over. No. Look, I'm in, I'm okay with cheating in this game of Jenga, but that's too much. Okay. Now can I, can I call somebody in and help? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be able to say Dude, I beat you. This has to be like a 50, 50. It has to be like a, You can't right? phone a friend. <laughs> the producer, you guys, uh, can we can we call somebody in to, to help a brother out? There has to be a landline. It can't. But I want to own this. I want to be able to say I beat you fair and square. <laughs> we don't, we can't put the blame on anybody else. Damn, this one's. Uh, it's not often people uh, get to say they beat Triple C. Jeez. Oh, but just like that, I prove you, you guys. guys. <clears throat> just like that. If you could be on a reality show, which one would it be and why? Huh. My girl's watching. <laughs> I'm going to say Flavor Flav, but... <laughs> <laughs> huh. if, I mean, if you could be on a reality show, which one would it be and why? You could do like Survivor, I think would technically kind of be a reality show. Yeah, um, like um, old school Fear Factor. Do you no, ever watch heck, that? No, I could never do Fear Factor. That would be hard. Fear Factor, dude. I wouldn't. I, I don't even like touching things, like animals and bugs and all. Yeah, that would be hard. Or you could even go low key, like Kardashians. Would you ever let somebody just follow yeah, you like, around? Yeah, okay, no, time? I got one. Yeah, eventually, what I would like to do is I would like to have my own reality show for real estate. Oh, okay, that's so, interesting. Yeah, so that isn't there like million dollar listing is a is a show. So you could do something like that too. Yeah, yeah, but it's, for me it would be more pitching it to people that, you know, that are former professional athletes or athletes and make, okay. kind of making mistakes. And I would like to have the cameras kind of rolling as, as all this, kind of a tutorial too. So I think it would, I think it would kick off. So That's a good you one. You guys stay tuned. Maybe in the next couple to a few years, you guys will see Triple C again, now in real estate. <laughs>
and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to need it here. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think this but you is... have to put that on top first. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're, you're so done. So this is basically the only one I can go here. You are... I think I'm done. Yeah, I think you beat me here. <sighs> but you have to bend the knee. <sighs> this, is, this is really painful. Careful, careful. The thing's going <laughs> to... It's going to fall. It's going to fall. I'll have to own that. Yeah, but you got to have your guard up because those things are... I guess bricks do hit back. <laughs> Oh, this is so not fun. I just want you to know, I don't like losing. <gasps> How bossy was that Dude. right now? Like straight up, that was the bossiest thing I've ever done in my yeah. life. I'm dead serious. <coughs> Dude, I feel like, I think this is rigged. I feel like we don't even need to answer any more questions. We just need to, to figure out who's gonna win this, this round of Jenga. Yeah, this is terrible. This is terrible if you beat me in my own house. Can I just say, though, how proud I am of that? Like... But that means, I mean, I could... Right? I could still... Can I move up to these here? Um, I think... Because we've done these. I don't know how it works. Just pick one of these two. One of these two no. rows. You know what? Are I you going to straight go for it right now? <laughs> If you can actually pull this off, that would be the most impressive thing ever. Yeah, you it's guys. like when they pull the tablecloth. Yeah, you might you might want to back up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Damn! And I can officially say. But I still got these you belts. Do. And it goes battle. <laughs> but I am the champion of this game of Jenga. Henry, thank you so much for no, hanging out with us and playing a game of Jenga. We'll have to have you on back, uh, have you back on again sometime, <laughs> sure. maybe. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Sons, <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you guys once again.